Hello and welcome to Back Nine final round coverage from the 2017 Ed Hedrick Disc Golf Hall of Fame Classic presented by Proactive Sports Disc Golf. We have got some great rounds coming together here. Ricky Wysocki is at minus 29, but Paul McBeth charging hard. Big sexy commentary here with you as well. Can't forget to intro that. Nate Sexton and Jeremy Colling. And starting off here on hole 10, uh, par five. One that you'd like to get a nice straight drive, about 380 feet or so to get to this landing zone. And then from there, you have a couple different options. You can ha go for the roller play or big sidearm. Um, and if you can even get into position with a big turnover in your second shot, but um, this tee shot is kind of scary. You kind of have this open area here. You kind of feel exposed and you're going back into the woods. Yeah, and if you hit early, this hole gets really tough. Even that kick is going to be some trouble for Ricky. He probably will be able to get out to a decent spot, but you never know what, where those trees are oriented. And this lefty play is somewhat difficult, even though Devin has thrown this thing magisterially just yes. perfect just yes. turns over good forward skip and um it's just difficult when that that lefty fades off to the right but devin has thrown a fantastic tee shot there look at james go here is he going around that tree just yeah. inside it wow and that's the highest tee shot i've ever seen thrown on this that's hole a big shot same disc he threw on hole eight's drive he's in touch with that disc right now austin with another nice lefty play. See if it can take a straight skip. It can't. And it's gone in the woods. That's a meteor he's throwing there. That's a mid-range. Wow. Which is a long distance for that disc to carry. Unfortunately, just turns over a bit soon. Tomahawk coming out from Rick. Wow. He was really in a bad spot to see that come out. And Austin's going to play forehand hyzer out around back into the fairway. That is pretty well done. Next, we've got Devin, probably thinking attack mode here with all the power he's got. The tee shot doesn't set up so well for the lefty, but the second shot really doesn't. Oh my gosh. That's oh. great. That's, just, that's 70, 80 feet from the pin on a par five. Wow, okay, so I wasn't sure if he was gonna have the woods in the way, but it looks like he doesn't really have much. And he's made that putt twice already. Wow. James goes with a flat backhand here. That's huge. Sneaking the, through. Wow, through. Oh, what? my God. How did he get that angle to work? That doesn't even, like, geometry doesn't work that way. Like, I thought that was going to be way more left. Without It hardly had any turnover on it. He's got a legitimate shot at Eagle. That, did it cut the corner? I, I think it must have because there's no way that it didn't turn over. I don't know. Wow, maybe hit this small gap there. My mind is kind of screwing with me right now. And Austin, not going to be happy with that after a great shot out of the woods. This is where Ricky's tomahawk landed? That is a shocking miss there. It is. And it's even more shocking that his tomahawk got there. That's a huge tomahawk. Didn't I even like. see it fly out of the gap. And Ricky's trying to make up for the poor third shot and almost cans it from 100. Austin for birdie. Wow. Ooh. Oh, just over the top. Great run. And now there. we've got we got a treat here. Two eagle chances. Devin with a technical look. Come on, Devin. Oh, oh wow. Man. You know he was trying to run that. There was no way that was a layup. Be happy with his par I mean his birdie though, but Wow, and how close is James if Austin's putting oh, first? Oh no, and Austin has missed his putt. That's gonna be a bogey. That's his first bogey of the weekend. He's taking a six, and this is for three, and it's good. I didn't even know you could get that close. I, did, I never would have thought that a backhand, backhand, air, air, could do, I, I doesn't make sense. Wow, what a huge score there for James. And Devin's going to tap in his birdie. Rick's going to be unsatisfied with his par, and we have the full straight here. We got eagle, birdie, par, and bogey there The rainbow. Austin. Oh no, two bogeys. So that wasn't Rick's tomahawk. Oh, that makes more sense because okay. that was going to be about a 350 foot tomahawk okay. from in the woods. Well, we still have a rainbow of colors. True. Hole 11, par 3, 240, the entrance to the infamous Turkey Gulch. 
We are playing three straight par threes, very short, but surrounded all, all around by this OB gulch that will catch your discs. Any kind of putt rolls in there. It can get brutal. And Lee Card needs to watch out now because with that bogey that Ricky just took, Paul eagled that hole, or did he? No, he, he birdied, birdied the it. hole. And he is now 11 under through 10 holes. Oh, and James just sails out of bounds. Spotter didn't even know what hit him there. Should be a pretty makeable putt for his three. It's kind of crazy to think that if he makes that putt, he's going to get the same score he just got on a 900-foot par five. It is kind of crazy. Devin needs this to slow down, and it does it perfectly. Oh, yeah, even gets a little bit more drift towards the basket. Great result there. And Ricky with the forehand turnover. It's hyzering out. It's going to leave him a little bit more putt than he might want, but as a scary putt. I mean, if anybody's going to attack that aggressively and confidently, it's Ricky, but that is, that's a scary putt that nobody wants. And Austin with a very smooth turnover. This looks great. Go in. <gasps> oh, my gosh. No, did he go out of bounds? Of course he did. If you hit the basket on this hole, you go out of bounds. It's oh, gosh. That's why these holes are controversial, and I'm just going to say not that good. Mm, yeah, that seems to be the overwhelming. Great game. putt there from Ricky. Just stares into the face of danger and smiles. And doesn't blink. Yeah, he doesn't really smile that much when he plays, but, he, you know, yeah. you get the point. Yep. Yeah, I've, that's the second or the third time that I've seen a shot hit metal off the tee and end up OB. And I've only played this course four times. And the group's checking to see if he's OB or not. And he is. And he's gone well over the basket. Or is he not out of bounds? I don't know. He may Maybe not he was have safe. been out of bounds. That's a good break if he is. But does not connect on his birdie putt. James, however, does save his par and is able to get the same score on 10 as he does on 11. <laughs> Which is something that you wouldn't be happy with unless you told me that you were going to get a 3 on 10. Yep. And even then, you might not be quite yeah, happy with like, the 11. I just got a 3 on 11, really? And good par save, I'm going to say, for I Austin. think you might be right. He might have stayed in those rocks. The OB line is drawn pretty weird over there, yeah. where it, where the ditch, it's way down there. I don't know why Devin has the spotter's red flag there, but he returns it. He gets his birdie. And yeah, Austin, Austin was in. Two birdies and two pars there. All right, maybe I was too rough on the gulch. Maybe it isn't so bad. <laughs> Hole 12, par 3, 216 feet, extremely narrow gap, out of bounds on the right. And the real challenge here is that the slope kind of funnels most shots. If you try to play a safe hyzer, it's going to roll right back to the out of bounds. This hole comes in an average of exactly three. Okay, interesting. So it's strange that we say a lot of times we like holes that the average comes in around par. Mm -hmm. This is a hole that I can't say a lot of people are in love with. Uh, that might be the nicest thing anyone can say about this hole. Yeah, well, you don't want a hole that averages par that's also 216 feet. Let me tell you that. Okay. Is it only 216 feet? Yeah, that's a little short to be averaging par uh, without being pretty frustrating for most players. Because if, as you see Rick, I mean, going forehand roller on this hole, that is an absolute bailout play. Mm -hmm. He's not really looking for a birdie necessarily. I mean, he, he certainly could birdie it, but it's going to take some luck. And that sort of just shows you you know, what this hole is. James has been doing really well on it, though. That is the ideal play, and this is exactly what happens when you make the ideal play. You go straight in the water off the hillside and get just, mad about it. <laughs> yeah, definitely get mad about it, because I mean, what else can you really do from That's that? fantastic drive. It was so good. And um, it just seems like so many shots find a way to funnel down to that OB creek right there. Yeah. And and is going to hit the basket again? Look out. Sit. Please just sit. Please just sit. Yeah. There we go. Under the basket. And that's that roll of dice that he has to take hitting that hillside. And yep. It pays off for him. Snake eyes. Wait, that's not good. Snake eyes is bad. Uh-oh. Stop. Good. Yeah, but I would say James's shot was better than Austin's. Yeah. To the eye. Ways. Yeah. To I mean, the eye. From the tee, you, you, you would take James's shot every time, but know that you're kind of playing with danger and that's about as aggressive of a run as you'll ever see and somehow he has put the brakes and stopped it from going to be as well james for the big par save 
Very nicely done. That's a tough thing to do. After you throw thrown such a great drive and you kind of get a bad break roll away, to step up and make that par putt shows a lot of nerve. Absolutely. Devin in for par. Ricky in for par. And Austin with a tap in birdie. Great job. Saw Devin retrieving James's disc from the water back there. Some good guy points. Hole 13, par three, 231 feet. Kind of the same story here. You gotta throw a putter, keep it really flat. Please don't hit a root. Please don't hit the chains. Please don't hit the flag. <laughs> Just settle. Just stop next to the basket. Just nestle, please. There's so many crazy things that happen in this one. It's the most straightforward hole in the course, even more so than hole three in, in some ways, but it just has the most interesting results. Yeah, interesting is a very nice word for it. And Fantastic. Uh, he's got a total of three feet between 12 and 13 combined. That's not bad. Let's follow that flight. And just check out how this hits the hillside at the right angle to not get a dramatic skip one way or the other. It gets the counter skip on the second basket. And he's just long yeah. enough to clear those tree roots. Because if you hit mm -hmm. in there, it could be a little bit different story. Oh yeah, anything can happen. And this is a very tricky lefty shot here. So difficult to get the right amount of turn without overturning and hitting the hill with any angle which would cut roll back into the creek. Yeah, a little bit easier with the left-handed forehand, I would think, to control those angles. And this oh. is horrible. No. And it's in. He has stayed safe, but he has hit an Invisalim. I I can't even see what he I hit. I don't know, but that is pretty fortunate to be in bounds. That looked like it was headed straight for the bottom of the creek. James playing this smartly far to the left, but... Oh, good. It stops at least. Wow. I thought that was going to clear those trees. Somehow there were no casualties there. That's no. always good to see. Not yet, anyway. Oh, my gosh. Is Ricky running that? You think? I sure hope not. I mean, what a crazy player. If that was his intention to run it, then that's just insane. Nonetheless, he's under the basket for his tap in par, and we're going to have to see if James can hit this one for birdie. Of course he can. Nice birdie from James. No, James threw three pretty good tee shots, but he comes away with just the one birdie, a couple out of bounds, but some great saving putts. Yeah, one under the Golts is not bad, and... Devin will be one under through Gulch, and Ricky will be one under through the Gulch, and Austin will be two under. All players under par through those three-hole stretches. Pretty good. That is good. Hole 14 is a 714 foot par four with another dual fairway. You can either play a turnover backhand through this high route where the drone is going or a left hand backhand, right hand forehand on the lower route. The goal basically being clear the ditch in the on the first shot and then navigate your way up and over the hill to the blind basket position, maybe get a birdie putt. Yeah, the second shot here is always tricky. It doesn't really matter where you land. And we're gonna see Austin go for the He's actually going for, I don't know which gap he was going for. I think he was going for the I right the, gap. The, I thought the uh, I thought the left. But yeah, I was confused right. as yeah. well, but it seemed like he was trying to throw Heiser to clear the ditch on the right side there, and James will certainly be throwing the right hand and Heiser, the very traditional play for right hand predominant players. And this is oh my a phenomenal drive, and he's actually throwing it so great. Where is that he? He's on the tee pad of the next hole? He's skipped down the hill to the left, which may be pretty difficult, actually. And Devin as well. I'm kind of surprised to see these lefties not going for the straight um, left side gap. Yeah. 
Yeah. He might. He kind of kicked into it. Yeah, I don't th- that was unintentional. But there's a. I think the best route to the pin might be that left side. The right side gets you the most distance. But in terms of where the trees are, and Ricky with it. Oh my gosh, he can might see the basket from there. If if you can ever see the basket on your second shot, that's a very special drive. Yeah, I mean that's a huge advantage on the field. I mean Austin's going to be lucky to be able to see the basket from where this is going. And he's get pretty hard left there. He's going to have some woods to deal with, but he's not that far away from the basket. Not that bad of a second shot. No. There's a good flex line for Devin here, but he hasn't been able to really turn it over as much as he'd like. Awkward footing being down there in the bottom of the ditch. He's still up the hill. He's going to be looking down the hill. He might be able to... Oh, yeah, he'll be able to jump out that approach for sure. James is beyond the tee pad wow. at full 15. I've never seen one there yet. And that's the first time, and he's kicked back into the woods. Unfortunate break off the tee to get that far off to the left. Look at Ricky. Just a downhill harp to the basket. That's just insane. That is such a huge drive. I, I'm amazing. That is insane. Just a tap in. It's probably a 500 foot drive through the woods. And Devin does jump out his approach, and it's got to stay, and it does. There is a, a ditch there that can make putting kind of tricky, but he has avoided that. And Austin has found a way to get under the basket. He's going to have a tap-in par. Let's see where James is. I think I saw the flag. Oh, wow. Ooh. And he's going to be down there in that ditch. That's going to be a tricky par putt for James. It's not that long. As long as there's, that tree is not in the way, he should have a pretty good look at it. Yeah, a little bit awkward footing, but he's in. Oh, yeah. Mm, Devin should have a pretty easy tap in here. Blowing some of that magical dirt dust. Mm-hmm. And a good par there for Devin. And look at Ricky's drive here. Wow. Second shot. Yeah. Awesome. Has to be the best played hole 14 of the week. We got one birdie, three pars. Hole 15, par four, 540 feet. You're going down the hill, moving a little bit to the right, but then you've got this out of bounds creek that crosses the fairway. Both sides of the creek are inbounds because there's no string line up here. So if you do find your drive early over the creek, you're actually okay. But most players are gonna to try to lay up as close to that creek as they can and then throw the shot up over the hill to the green. And Ricky is electing to play the forehand shot. Is more right than he'd like to be and wow, skips wow. fantastically. That's a great landing zone there for the tee shot. That probably should have hit a tree earlier, but that's a great break for him to get through everything. Austin has thrown a Oh, he's loving that. Uh, even better drive there down the middle the whole time. Going to have that main gap that you'd like to have for your second shot for an easy up and down over the hill. James is going over. Oh, that's not a surprise there. Oh, and he's caught some of the limbs, but he's he is still going to make it. Well over it. Wow. Holy cow, that's huge. Huge drive. Completely commits to that drive 100%. I mean, you look at Ricky and Austin's drive way back there. He's going to have maybe 50, 60 feet for Eagle. Yeah, that is amazing. The second Eagle around if he makes that. Devin has drifted a little bit too early in the woods. But he still should have something to work with. Maybe mm -hmm. even a forehand. Yep. Yeah, we're going to see a forehand turnover here. Looks pretty good. Nice high flex. It's going to come up a bit short. and Actually, maybe not short. Just pin high off to the left side of the basket. Maybe 28 feet or so. Not bad at all. And Ricky's put a great move on this. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Just another tap in. And Austin with a 
Z Buzz. Another great nice. shot. This guy, these guys are putting on a clinic right now. <laughs> James for Eagle. What a drive. Come on, buddy. Stay up. Oh, it's drifted off to the left. A little bit Shoot. over the basket. Devin for birdie. Oh, yeah. Great putt from Devin. He's been putting really confident this week. Yeah, he has. Huge putts in the front nine. Some solid putts in the back nine to keep things going. He's right in the mix. James for his birdie. And Ricky and Austin will just tap in these birdie putts as well. Oh, no. What? Oh, my God. That wasn't even going fast. <sighs> what? I don't understand it. And with... Wow. The Macbeth there in the background uh, on 18, and as we know, he's charging. That spit out is not going to help Ricky's cause. That could be devastating, and if he doesn't watch out, Devin's going to catch him, and wow, that was a total unfortunate blow Brutal. there. Hole 16, par 3, downhill, going to the right, coming in 87 meters, 285 feet. The preferred play is going to be the forehand or the left-handed backhand hyzer, and that's what we're going to see here, except maybe James going probably J.K. Aviar. Awesome to throw first here with his buzz OS. Right down the middle of the gap. This has got a good run for ace. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Inches Austin's away. just throwing ace runs out here today. Hit the cage on 11, almost rang up 12 and 13, nearly 16. Man. Stay outside the tree. And it does not. But he's still within 40. James. Yeah, James putting range is certainly yeah. well in range there. He's going to be looking at a good birdie putt from there. And Devin's a little bit longer than Whoa. he'd like to be. That's... On his way to 17's T, he's going to be about 45 long. James actually might be closer than... I think he will be. Ricky with a harp, I believe. A little long also. Almost killing our camera guy. Oh, he's all right. Take it easy on him, Rick. Come on, man. He's working hard. <laughs> oh, look at the post right in the way. Does he? Oh, oh wow. man. He liked it out of his hand. Really frustrated. That's a huge situational miss right there. Definitely. And James, the step putt just a bit high. Ugh. Let's see if it Austin and Ricky can clean up. I'm thinking yes. Another lefty who's just had a great putting stroke all week. And Ricky for the birdie. Spit out's got to be in his head here. And he's putted through anyways. Yeah, that's how you stay in the basket, he's saying to himself. Yeah. I mean, these courses, just the way that they are, doesn't matter how great you're throwing, it seems like everybody always bottlenecks together. The main difference in who wins this tournament and who gets 20th place is how well you're putting. Yeah. And these guys have been putting so well all week. And... Um, to step up after, up, oh, up, oh, gonna, oh, doesn't oh. quite execute the kick out. <laughs> Trying to have some fun in this situation. Ambitious. Drops down two strokes with Ricky with two to go. Devin knows exactly how important that putt was. And they're still chasing Paul, who is in the clubhouse now as the leader. Yeah, and not to mention Simon Lazat after tearing up the course on uh, the second day, shooting 11 under, he seems to be putting together a great round as well. Yeah, and that's actually two players who are in the clubhouse at 32 under par. So Ricky needs to get, if he goes birdie birdie here, then he'll win the tournament outright. Yeah. Or maybe even more likely par eagle with the holes we've got left. And 17 is the hardest hole on the course. No surprise there. Statistics prove that it is just a monster averages a quarter of a stroke above par 
So difficult, especially if you're throwing a sidearm here. Whoa. The Ricky has pulled it out oh, of play. This and is, oh, man. did that is that shy of the Mando? It is. It is shy of the mandatory. If he doesn't, if he bogeys this hole. Oh, bogey is absolutely in play after that shot. Then he will be out of the race because he'd have to, well, he could have eagle, to eagle eight. to get his way back in. Wow. And so yeah. this is, you can see right here, this hole 17 is showing its teeth. That is a terrible spot for Ricky to be. And Devin has put a good oh, move on this. this. Is awesome. Wow, and he's actually in position for birdie. If he goes birdie eagle, then he's in the 32. Ricky from behind the Mando going roller, perhaps? No, maybe oh, yeah. more just, yeah. A huge roller. That is pretty well done from That's, there. There's not a lot he could have done. There's so many trees to avoid there. He's missed everything up until the point where his roller hit the tree. He's still going to have a very difficult time making par, though. Yep. And James, a nice little flex forehand to the top of the hill. That should leave him a pretty easy up and down for his par. Austin's out of position, hacking oh, some trees. Boy. I mean, what else do you do from there? Nothing. And here is Ricky. Huge, important shot. Looks like he's done pretty well with it. Yeah, he's keeping that heart turned oh, over. It's great. Oh, my God. I, and he will have a great opportunity now to save par and keep himself in the running for the win. Just proving that he is the scramble. That was so clutch. He's scramble Jesus. He's... The scramble egg master. He is. <laughs> he just gets up and down. It doesn't matter where he is. He finds a way. He wills his way to pars, man. Yep. I mean, at worst. Yep. He has to go out of bounds to get bogeys. And Devin with that fantastic drive. He's actually left himself a little bit short, but I think he should have a pretty good opportunity to make birdie here. This hole is so difficult for lefties. That is, that is so impressive to be up there in two shots. It's hard to overstate it, really. It's a very, very tricky landing zone for any lefty. Yeah. And righty, honestly. If Devin needs this putt in the worst way to go to 30 under. Oh, no. Two straight cage putts for Devin. That oh, man. What could have been is what he's got to be thinking now because he's pretty much out of it after that miss. Yeah, there's nothing he can really do. He'd have to get a two on hole 18 to Not likely. put himself in the in the playoff if there were, were one. Ricky for a big time par. He's Whoa. got it. Look at him. He's, He's like, got it. What are you doing, man? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> And now it's that simple. I mean, we've got two players done at 32. Ricky is at 31 on an eagleable par five. So it comes down to this. Eagle for the win, birdie for the playoff, par, and you're out of there. And look at these scores. The spread is so close. Everyone has had a completely different round, yet they're all right there at the end, all within striking distance. However, one player actually has a chance to force his way into the playoff, and like you said, Maybe an even outside chance at eagle here. Yeah, it's certainly an eagleable shot. It would not surprise me really at all, other than the fact that it's just the absolute biggest moment for him to come through and eagle it. You know, it's it's absolutely within his skill set. Yeah, we saw three players eagle this hole um, on round two, so it's certainly um, very doable. Fantastic shot! Wow, Austin has flicked it. I said yesterday that. I saw the longest drive I've ever seen this hole. That, That's equal to it. That could be the longest one right there. And Ricky. Oh. Whoa. And. Oh, boy. I, and that almost I don't like takes that. Eagle out of the equation. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Well out of position there. But he's still in play for the birdie. And James never got that turned over. And that's found the woods. Evans turned it too much. And has oh, gotten he got through, through everything. and a good kick to a boot. Great kick. That's gonna put him right in the middle. There's no way he can reach the green from here, right? Mm-mm. Well. Wow. Holy cow, that is so good. Okay. Oh my gosh. 
So Ricky has this for the win. That's 40, How that's only you? 40 feet. How? Maybe that's the new landing zone over there. I never wow. knew you were supposed to throw it in the woods. I don't understand how he did that. And James just absolutely torqued that over. That's deep. Yeah, awkward footing there. He slipped a little bit. I'm still kind of a little bit mind blown by Ricky's approach shot, but. This is great from Devin too. I need to stop being so mind blown by these shots because he just does it all the time and it should be like normal, but it's not. Wow. And Austin has a really um, good chance at Eagle, but he's turned over his nuke. Man, that, mm, he left a lot of meatballs on the spaghetti dinner. Okay, that's stupid. <laughs> James forehand roller. It's a dark day when James Conrad's going to the forehand oh, roller. Oh, but look at this. He's throwing it fantastic. And it's hit the tree to slow it down. What a shot Great from shot. James. How, Pulling out all the tricks there in the last hole. I won't question his forehand roller again. Don't ever do it again. And that was Devin's eagle bid. And there it is, the official. Macbeth, 32 down. 14 under with two bogeys. Insane. Only one par for the round. Maybe the most impressive round I've ever seen. Simon, 11 down, also at 32 under. Ricky is at 31 with an eagle putt to, to end this thing right here, right now. And Austin has off the band for eagle. This is it, for the win from 40 to 45 feet. And he just didn't get the pop. It's just very surprising to see that from Ricky. I mean, that's a... He can't believe it. I mean, that's his range. That's Ricky Raptor legs range all day. Oh, he would have been getting the knees high if he hit that putt. Mm -hmm. And James with a solid up and down with the flick roller. Ricky is going to be nothing short of absolutely ticked off at himself for missing that. But I mean, maybe he did it for the fans, for me and for you, because a playoff with Ricky Wysocki, Simon Lazat, and Paul Macbeth, like what more do you want? Wait, did you just say the top three ranked players in the world are gonna have a playoff at the national tour finale? I think that is what I'm saying. That is um, pretty special. Pretty much the perfect finish from a fan's perspective. And speaking of special, what a great weekend for Devin and Austin and James. Yep. They all played phenomenal they golf. They really did. Three rounds in the woods. They showed great poise, great putting all weekend. And man, just a couple strokes off. Yeah. Man. Could have been a nine-way playoff. <laughs> no kidding. That wouldn't have even really surprised me that much the way these courses all come together. But there it is. Number one, two, and three players in the world are going to have a sudden death playoff starting on hole one at the Jackson course. Buckle your seat belts, folks. Paul Macbeth back on hole one, 660 feet. Looks like a T-bird three in his hand. And he... Oh no, he has kind of yanked this and that could almost spell the end of his tournament right there. Yeah, there's just, with these three players, you know someone's getting a three. So that, I'm not gonna say he's it takes going him out of it. roller. Yeah, he's going cut roller with a PD2. And look how fast, that's- No way. Had he avoided that. He I could have had a two putt. He may have been up there on a, I don't believe it says 660. This the whole play is like, it's like 700, 800 feet. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel like 660. And Ricky, and Ricky sneaks everything. through, but that's an awkward lie. A very awkward lie. Simon is easily in best position to take the three in the win. Paul's in a terrible spot here, and he goes super high destroyer. Can it get through the limbs? I, I mean, it's a real shot. He has put it in the circle from probably 450 feet. Special players make special plays, and that right there is one of the better shots you'll ever see. And Ricky sneaks it through a very narrow gap right to the basket as well. And I may have missed the gap he was going for, I don't know, but Who he knows? is up there at 30 feet away. Simon's got a pretty routine little forehand shot here after that huge roller. I mean, you can see how much more that disc was rolling. It had so much steam on it. Yeah, I, I wish we could have seen it finish. After after those drives, I wasn't sure if anyone would have a three putt besides Simon and- Ricky. For the birdie. Look at that. And he stays alive. I mean, a huge putt. Killer approach shot at the awkward stance. And Paul needs this for just one of the most miraculous birdies from being way out of position. Wow. Heart. Will not. Neither one of these guys will give an inch. Not Simon either. All three of them yeah. playing fantastic disc golf. And just bag-ons that. No big deal. We might be here for another hour, Germ. 
top players playing at the top level. It's those are not fours. Those are definitely threes. <laughs> yeah, those are all birdies there. And we're gonna move on to hole two, the 390 foot straight backhand flip up. And Paul's going with that T bird three again, and that's a little more so hyzer than he'd like. Heavy on the hyzer. What does it do? It's a 40 footer. It takes a nice skip. It doesn't. It just. Checks up a little bit there, but yeah, he's inside That's 40 not feet. Parked. Nope. And Simon maybe sees a door opening there with that drive. You think Simon's throwing mid range? I th think he may be. It's hard to tell. Oh I mean, no, that's a hundred feet short. And that you know someone's gonna two the hole. Someone ha that I mean, almost takes him out of it unless he throws it in. And Ricky's inside. This is not well thrown. And this is skipping. Wow. That's. And I'm guessing that's 60 feet. Yeah, that's at least 60. But wow, I'm surprised to see that Paul is the closest. I know. This hole is pretty much. Um, Simon, to stay alive. Oh. Just short. You never know. I mean, the, these, these, these guys are, aren't parked, no. so he's not dead yet. But Ricky could kill him right here from 60 feet. It looks pretty good, oh, wow. and there's your raptor legs right there. What I mean, that's what he does. So good. Oh yeah, he is pumped. I mean, that is so so cool. Paul from 40 feet to stay in it. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. Look at that little fist pump there. These guys are competing for national tour. I mean, they're not just competing for this tournament. They're competing for the overall player of the year, national tour points, everything. There's a lot on the line here. Yeah. A quick out Vita Zane to Simon. Back to Germany he goes. <laughs> bon voyage. <laughs> Hole three. Fairly straightforward. Paul does have this a little bit high. Should yeah. sit down pretty nicely. <clears throat> ah, it doesn't really sit down at all, actually. It takes a little bit of a kick and roll, and that's a sizable putt, much farther than you'd expect mm -hmm. on this hole. And Ricky's going to throw the little harp here. And he's also high up in the air, ace running the thing. But he's flexing back. Oh, it's good. That's a Ricky tap in, as long as he doesn't get spit out again. Yeah, that would be a disaster. It's crazy to think that right there could be the difference it in the tournament. absolutely is the difference. Paul needs to make this. Paul from 30 feet or so for the birdie looks, oh, oh no. Oh, and he knew it out of his hand. Look at him, he's leaning. Oh man, just springs out of the basket. Oh. Smile from Paul there, but not smiling on the inside, but he's always gonna lose with grace. Oh, Ricky's Ricky. gonna take it here, and that is a huge win in the national oh. tour final. And look at him, he is fired pumped. Up. He is pumped up. This is as pumped up as I've ever seen Ricky. He says, good <laughs> job, Paul. He sees Germ. He says, good job, Germ. <laughs> he comes over and he thinks that, um, I mean, I think at that moment he thought that he won the national tour points race and he actually came up second. Macbeth, Macbeth had enough had points him. to win the $10,000 for first place. But Ricky wins the, the Ed Hall Hedrick fame. Disc Golf Hall of Fame Classic. What a dramatic finish i mean you guys got a treat i'm not even going to thank you for joining us that you guys should be <laughs> thanking us you are welcome us. for joining us <laughs> you are welcome from jomez you are welcome from the pdga and innova we're happy to bring you guys this coverage and it doesn't get much better than that thank you germ for joining me and we will see you guys from the disc golf pro tour championship from jacksonville florida next week Thanks for watching. Big sexy commentary here, and you guys have a chance to win these beautiful discs from myself, Nate, my buddy Germ. What do you got for him? I got a Luster Champion Big Perm Thunderbird, and I got a Color Glow Sexton Firebird 2017 Vintage. Them things hot, real hot. Yes, yeah, sir. Good, good luck winning them. Leave a comment under this video if you want a chance. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. We always appreciate your comments, your likes. Share this video with your friends. Thanks for helping us grow the sport.